It was just a remarkable piece, Stanley Reed writing for the business pages of the New York Times, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why it was largely ignored, because, you know, not that many people read the business section, right? Mostly just people involved in business. It wasn't on the front page. It wasn't in the main pages. Um, but this is what Stanley Reed uh, reported, quote, San Sa Saudi Arabia, the de facto leader of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, said Sunday that it would extend their one million barrel a day cuts in oil production through June, noting that it was acting in coordination with other states. The other state that they're acting in coordination with would be Russia. Saudi Arabia just cut production, oil production by a million barrels a day. Russia just cut this, I mean, this, they just announced this on Sunday, right? Russia just cut oil production by 471,000 barrels a day. Yes, we are still importing oil from Russia, believe it or not. So here's the deal. Have you noticed the gas prices are rising? Get ready. You ain't seen nothing yet. The bloodthirsty leader of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and loves his dictatorial soulmate, Donald Trump, and is, you know, right now, as in real time, setting the stage to intervene in November's election in a really big way. Uh, much like he did with a smaller test run. Remember the fall of 2022 when gasoline was hitting five, $5 a gallon and they, you know, Republicans were putting stickers on gas pumps all over the country with pictures of Biden saying, I did that. Remember that? That was because Saudi Arabia cut oil production, you know, specifically to drive up the price of gasoline so that Democrats would be hurt. And I think you could make a good case that that Saudi intervention in our 2022 midterm elections helped put Republicans in control of the House of Representatives. Well, it looks like they're going to double down on it this time, they and Russia. And it could get even weirder because in 2017, Saudi Arabia made a bid to buy the largest gasoline refinery, the largest refinery in the United States. It's in Port Arthur, Texas. And Donald Trump was president, and, you know, I, I, I mean, Congress objected, right? I mean, Congress objected loudly. In fact, the Senate voted to, 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 to block the sale. But Donald Trump vetoed that, or ignored that, I guess was, was more accurate. It was a non-binding resolution. Um, ignored that and uh, sold the largest refinery in America to Saudi Arabia. So even if they don't cut their oil exports, even, even if we've got plenty of oil, if you can't convert that oil to gasoline, I mean, this, this refinery in Port Arthur, Texas, can process 600,000 barrels of oil a day. Now, a barrel contains, if my memory is uh, serving me correctly, uh, I, I believe a barrel contains 54 gallons. Uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong here. I should have looked it up before I went on the air. But in any case, 600,000, let's say it's 50 gallons. Uh, six, six times five is what, 30? So that's uh, uh, what, th uh, 3 million gallons of gasoline a day? That's going to have an impact on the U.S. gasoline supply. And when the gasoline supply gets tight, what happens? Prices go up. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, I'll say it again. I'm predicting $6 a gallon gasoline by November because the Saudis and the Russians are cutting our gas supply, our oil supply, and the Saudis own the refinery in Port Arthur, Texas that can cut our gasoline supply. So get ready. I mean, this is, this is just a clear, I, you know, MBS, the, the, the dictator of Saudi Arabia, the king is, or the, he's not the king, he's the crown prince, but he's, he runs the country, has literally given billions of dollars to the Trump family. He gave $2 billion to Jared Kushner. We have no idea how much money he gave to Donald Trump. We know that he gave Donald Trump millions by renting, you know, entire floors of his hotel and buying entire floors of apartments from him. And, and uh, you know, just uh, Trump has probably received hundreds of millions of dollars from the Saudis. Not to mention the other one we, we don't know is how much did they give him for the live golf tour? I mean, they, they paid some of these golfers $100 million to, to play in the game. Well, they rented the golf courses from Donald Trump. How much did they give him? We don't know. But I'm guessing if they're paying the guys on the, on the greens $100 million, they're probably paying Trump $100 million. 
So here we have Saudi Arabia that is deeply in bed with the Trump family and desperately wants Donald Trump to be president again. I mean, he broke with tradition. After they gave him all this money, he broke with tradition and, and made Saudi Arabia the first country he visited when he became president in 2017. This is something that has never happened before. Every president makes their first overseas trip to one of our allies, typically Canada or uh, England. But no, he, he visited Saudi Arabia and, and, you know, put his hands on that globe. And this was just, you know, just shortly after Saudi Arabia had, had murdered and, and disembodied, dis, uh, whatever the word is for chopping somebody up and disposing of their body, uh, Jamal Khashoggi, the, the, the journalist who writes for, who wrote for the Washington Post. He followed that up by organizing an $8.1 billion sale of U.S. weaponry to Saudi Arabia. Again, this requires congressional approval. He ignored it. This from uh, a frontline report in July 2019. Both chambers have registered the disapproval of the emergency declaration. The Senate voted to block the sale in June. President Trump, however, has pledged to shoot down the measure when it arrives at his desk. And so what happened in, in 2018 in Trump's midterms? Well, according to retired Saudi oil ministry advisor Ibrahim al-Muhana, who wrote a book uh, that was just published uh, a year or so ago titled Oil Leaders, an Insider's Account of Four Decades of Saudi Arabian OPEC's Global Energy Play Christ, uh, Policy, quote, during the midterm election in 2018, President Trump pushed for lower oil prices, meaning gasoline, and he succeeded in the middle of June 18, the oil price was about $75, and the gasoline price in the United States was more than $3.50. Trump was worried that the GOP might lose the majority in both houses of Congress. The OPEC Plus group, led by Saudi Arabia and Russia, decided in June of 2018 to increase their production by 1.2 million barrels a day. Saudi Arabian production in November rose to more than 11.3 million barrels a day, its highest ever. So to give Trump and the Republicans a boost in 2018 when Trump was president, Saudi Arabia produced 11.3 million barrels a day. Well, they just cut their production down to eight. Now they're, they're currently at 9 million barrels a day, and they just announced a million barrel a day cut. By the way, when they did that in 2018, it lowered gas prices dramatically, and Republicans did really well in that election. But, uh, you know, now they're going to raise gas prices. So what can Biden do? What can we do about this? Well, first of all, we could nationalize the Port Arthur refinery. It's the crown jewel of U.S. energy security and, and never should have been sold to a foreign nation. Um, the problem with nationalizing it is it would, A, require Congress, and B, it would take some time. Another step would be to, to take America back to the oil export policy that was put in place by the Nixon administration. Back in 1973, Nixon banned the export of crude products from the United States. Now, that was ended in uh, 20, 20 uh, what was it, uh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. 2015, by Congress and President Obama after massive donations from the fossil fuel industry. You could call them bribes. They repealed that ban. So now we're exporting about 4 million barrels of oil a day. If we kept all that oil here in the United States, we'd have really cheap gasoline. And we wouldn't be relying on Saudi exports. Right now, we're only importing a little less than a million barrels a day from Saudi Arabia. So, and, and uh, both the Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times have editorialized that Biden has the power to do this by executive order. And finally, he could get ahead of what the, what the Saudis and Putin are up to by simply telling the American people, look out, you're going to see high gas prices this fall because these people are manipulating the, the world supply of oil, and the Saudis own the biggest refinery in the United States. Now, the fact of the matter is that Biden's probably not going to do that. He's, he, it's just, you know, not his strategy typically. So what do we do? Well, we have to tell everybody we know, get ready. So that when these high gas prices happen, instead of blaming Biden, people will blame Saudi Arabia and Russia, which is where the blame should be. So... Anyhow, just an FYI, you can read all about it over at HartmanReport.com. It's right at the top of the page here today. It's free. Amazing stuff.
Now, on top of this, a, another foreign government is planning on spending $100 million in our elections.